What percentage should I give my business partner? So I got a great question from one of my Google Plus readers, love you guys, Kura Aesthetica, who wrote in and basically she has a business and wants him to come in and be her business partner in the company and is wondering, do I have to give up 50% of my company to this person? So here's the thing, okay? You can, you can skin this cat in a lot of different ways. There's no rule that says you have to give up half your company to a partner coming in. For me, the thing that you wanna look at, one is, how much value is this person bringing? Is the person bringing equal value to what you're bringing? Yes or no? And then two, how long has this company been around? Is this a, just a startup idea where you haven't done anything yet or have you been around for a little while and you've already built up something that you know, that person hasn't contributed to? So obviously if you've been around for a longer period of time, a new person coming in doesn't deserve as much as you who've already built this thing up. But if it's a brand new startup, then they have a case for wanting to have a bigger piece of the pie. Regardless of the decision of how much percentage you're gonna give up, you have to make them commit to the business. This is so important. I get that it's exciting at the beginning, okay? Partnerships are always exciting because at the start, you're, you're struggling, right? You're feeling like, I can't do all this myself. I don't have the skills and this person has great skills that can help and I don't wanna do this alone. And it's just, there's so much pain of going alone and so much excitement of bringing somebody new on that all you see is the, the good side. Not a lot of partnerships will work out all the way to the end. And you wanna make sure that you're really getting the right person on board. It really is like choosing a spouse, okay? You have to know them, like them, trust them, love being around them, and think that it's gonna work out for many, many, many years. And what do you do before you get married? You date. And that's what you need to do with your business as well. You need the person to commit to the company before you just give them equity. And that can come in two forms. One, they buy in. They have to pay. They have to pay for equity in your company. Your business is worth something and you're not just gonna give it away. They have to buy a certain amount at a certain price. The other way is to earn in. And so instead of just giving them X percent of the company, they earn it when they hit milestones. So remember I had a software company when uh, we were bringing on a new salesperson, it was started by myself and my business partner. We are bringing on a third partner who was gonna be our salesperson. And he was joining relatively early on, but I didn't know him too, too well. And I didn't wanna just give him a piece of my company. Because the last thing you wanna have happen in your business is have a guy who owns a piece of your company who's just a dead weight, who isn't doing anything for the company and is, is somebody who you don't wanna be around. And that can happen very often with a lot of companies. So we made him earn in. And we said, okay, we'll give you up to whatever it was, 20% of the business. You earn your first 5% if you can close X number of deals within this amount of time. And we set milestones. So you get your first 5% when this happens, your next 5% when this happens. And so it shows that they're, they have to be committed to the business and actually get results for you before you're gonna give them equity. So I would encourage you to have some kind of benchmark to put in if they're not gonna be buying in and giving you money for your shares. The last thing I'd encourage you to do, and this is for anybody who's bringing on a partner, is have a shareholders agreement. It's so important and make sure that you include a shotgun clause. A shotgun clause basically is something that you write into your shareholders agreement that allows one partner to buy out another partner if it's not working out. You know, for whatever reason, it's just not working out, you're fighting, you're doing all the work and this person's not you know, doing anything and they own 50% of your business, how do you get them out? And a shotgun clause says, I will buy your shares at this price or you have to buy all of my shares at the same price. So you get to pick the price and the other person gets to pick either accept the deal or buy you out. So one way or the other, somebody's getting bought out of the business. So you have to be smart with what price you set, but it's an important part to have in your shareholders agreement before you bring on a partner. The other thing you might wanna look at is a piggyback clause, and that's basically where if one person is a minority shareholder, if you decide to sell, that person can come with you. So you know, if you're the majority shareholder, so somebody who's a minority shareholder, you sell your business, that person has to go with it. So you don't have, 
uh, one person holding up a deal. So if you have a deal to sell your company, that minority shareholder can cause a lot of problems for you and prevent the sale of the business, which you know you don't want to have happen. So that person is dragged along with the sale of the company. Anyway, a few things to think and think about. Get a lawyer involved. But you definitely don't have to give up 50% of your business. Make sure they're offering value. Make sure they're either buying in or earning in and get your shotgun clause in your shareholders agreement before they sign up. Believe. For everybody watching, like the video, thumbs up below. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Ask a question in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can click on my face, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon.